In this video, I'm going to present a short overview of the latent APHIS created at Michigan State University under the supervision of Dr. Anil Jain. First, I want to talk about how the system actually works under the hood, so to speak. Uh, so you can see here that we have a diagram of the system architecture. And we'll start on the left, uh, given an input image here of a latent, which we assume to be in grayscale for this system, not in color. The first step is um, some of these more high-level features. So the region of interest shown on top here, uh, or the ROI, is detected by an algorithm, which is trained to pick out which part of the image is fingerprint and which is background. So then within that ROI, another algorithm tries to pick out the actual ridge flow or orientation field, and that's shown here. Uh, and that's based on the patterns of lines in the image that look like a fingerprint. And the last thing at this stage is the ridge spacing, um, which is detected by a third algorithm, and that, as it sounds, is how far apart the ridges are. The next step involves processing this input image. You can see some examples in this diagram, these rows here, which all look pretty similar but slightly different from each other. Basically, these are all just different ways of manipulating the contrast level and similar attributes of the image to bring out the ridges. These methods all look fairly similar to a human based on the grayscale images you see here, but through research we determined that they're all actually important and all provide complementary information. So in fact, in the final step, we generate three minutia sets, which are also complementary, and those are directly analogous to the different image enhancement techniques that I mentioned before in step two. While these minutia sets are similar overall, the different image enhancements lend themselves to the discovery of different minutia. For example, one enhancement technique when applied to an image might be great for isolating minutia that have a lot of background noise overlapping. Or a different enhancement might be bad with those background patterns, but instead good at picking out minutia that have been smudged, for example. So in this way, all three minutia templates really contribute to the overall performance and together they give a better picture of the true minutia set from this latent than any one minutia set alone. One more thing that should be mentioned at this stage is the texture template, shown here on the bottom. This fourth template doesn't contain any minutia in the traditional sense, it's more like a representation of the ridge flow across the print. This is especially helpful in latent prints since they sometimes have very few minutia points if we're looking at a very small partial print, so in those cases, the texture template can contribute a lot to the matching process. And this texture template is again generated based on all of this preliminary processing that we did in the first two stages. So up to this point, the system has done a lot of processing on the input image to pull different information out of it. And we have four templates as a result of that process. We have three minutia templates here and a texture template. Just a quick note as we go into the comparison or matching process, the templates I described refer specifically to the latent prints. For a rolled print, we have only one minutia template and one texture template, since rolled prints are expected to be more straightforward and don't require um, as much processing ahead of time. So during the matching process, each of the three minutia templates in the latent print are compared in turn with the single minutia template from the rolled print, and that gives three separate similarity scores. So then the texture template from the latent and the texture template from the rolled print are compared, which gives another similarity score. So these four scores are fused together, and that's how the, all the templates end up contributing to the matching process. Each of them contributes a score. From that point, it's all very standard. Our rank list is returned with candidate rolled prints, which shows a similarity score, and that score is going to be the fused score from all four templates together. So now that we've looked at that sort of abstract design of the system, I want to take a quick look at how the software actually looks. Specifically, I want to look at this user interface portion. There are some other features that are done in the command line, and those will be explained in separate videos, but this interface is just going to handle the most standard use case, just searching one latent query against a gallery of rolled candidates. I'll just quickly note that the software installation is also covered in a separate video, so we are assuming that the software is already installed here. Now when we open it, this is the first screen we see. Like I mentioned, this interface is very simple. We're just going to use this selector to find the latent image that we want to search, and we'll use this one. 
Now when we confirm our choice, the first thing we're going to see is the result of that feature extraction process that I explained previously. So we're going to see uh, things like the ridge flow, and you can see that this is bounded by the ROI, the re region of interest that was detected. And we're also going to see the three different minutia sets, along with the background image, which is the result of the processing that led to this particular minutia set. And you can see that this has one type of background image, this one is different, and then the third one is going to look like the um, input latent query. So when we're satisfied um, with that, we can go ahead and search. Now when this is finished, we're going to see the, this candidate list and next to each potential mate, you can see the rank here and you can see this is the similarity score. When we can scroll through a few pages here if we want to, um, in this interface it's just going to show the top 24 candidates across four pages. And the last thing we can look at here is going to be the correspondence. So for each potential candidate, we can see the correspondence that the algorithm found between the latent query and the rolled print. Now here with this rank one candidate, this is a closed data set, so I happen to know in this example that it is a correct match. And you can see the correspondence ends up looking pretty good. And you can see the number of minutia points here that it found in correspondence. And we can check the rank two candidate as well. Obviously this won't work nearly as well because they're not a true match but the algorithm does its best to fit those together. And we can see it's a much smaller number of minutia points in correspondence, so that makes sense. And the last quick thing I'm going to show is that if we click the latent query here, we can again look at those features that were extracted from the latent print in case we wanna check back on those while we're looking at the search results. And that wraps up this video, just giving an overview of the system. And there will be a few other videos coming for installation of the software and some other things like batch feature extraction, model training, and so on.